They number in the millions, and they play a crucial role in society, yet they often get very little respect. So who are they? Here's reporter Laurie Johnson with the answer. For the last two decades, working mothers have been trading the career track for the mommy track, leaving the office behind and choosing to be stay-at-home moms. But can these go-getters really find fulfillment by leaving the workplace and becoming homemakers? And in the current economic climate, is this choice even feasible? Talk show host and best-selling author Dr. Laura Schlesinger helps women answer those tough questions. She says being an at-home mother is the most important job there is, one that requires incredible sacrifice but provides tremendous satisfaction in return. In her new book, In Praise of Stay-at-Home Moms, Dr. Laura pays tribute to moms who decide to stay at home, nurture their kids, and focus on their families. Well, we've got with us a dear friend by satellite from New York, Dr. Laura. Happy Passover to you. And Thank you very much. Happy Easter upcoming. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Listen, you've written a book. Uh, you, you've been a working mom, a professional person, broadcaster. How come a book about stay-at-home ho moms? Gosh, that's such a good place to start. <laughs> uh, you know, when we talk about being a working mom, it sort of depends what we're talking about. When my son was a baby, I wasn't working, and then when he was in school, well, I would get up at 5 in the morning, write books, uh, get him up at 7, get him off to school, drive him to school, go do my radio show, pick him up after school. I mean, he didn't even know I worked. So the issue is, if you're not going to burn your candle all along the whole length of it, uh, is to make sure that you're mothering your children uh, but it doesn't mean you have to be within the confines of the four walls all day. Uh, I think all I ask you, had you avoid a nervous breakdown? <laughs> well, I think some women, uh, you know, I got so many calls over the years, of two, two broad kinds. One, I'm home with my kids and I'm trying to make a home out of a house, but everybody denigrates me. Whenever I go anywhere, they go, oh, that's all you're doing? You're wasting your life. Or there's the woman who thinks she has to work full-time, go to school full-time, try to be a mother full-time, try to be a wife full-time, and it doesn't work. And what usually falls apart is the mothering and the wifing. And, uh, of course, then we don't have a home and peace and joy in our lives and that sense of bonding and connectedness. So uh, you have to really think of how much you can sustain on your plate at one time. Uh, why is it so important for children to have a mother that's at home, nurturing, like you're talking about? Well, I've always been amazed, quite frankly, that any woman, any woman would imagine that her love and her nurturing and her attention, her teaching, her sharing, her playing, all of that, any of that could be replaced by hired help. I mean, children are born, they can't even find their noses. It takes them a long time for the brain cells to connect before they can do anything. And all that development is not just genetic, it takes place in a context. And the context is the love and warmth of that one person out of whom they came mm -hmm. and at whose breast they suckled. And it makes a very, very big difference. I mean, you're you're molding a human being. You're there for all the life questions. You know, why are bugs? What is God? You're there for all of those questions. What is the psychological damage to children if, a, say, they're born and within a, a few months the mother goes into the workforce and le leaves them to professional care? Well, you know, the letters I get since I've written this book and I've been talking about this issue on my radio show, a lot of people have written me saying, you know, they bounced around from nanny to nanny or this to that or daycare. And while they were competent in school and, and could do all of that sort of stuff, they really felt a longing and a loss in their lives for that special kind of bonding which made them feel safe and very trusting of intimacy. It, it really makes a difference. I mean, mm -hmm. if you have somebody taking care of a good a kid who is kind and loving and there constantly, sure. uh, that's going to mitigate a lot of that. But it's not the same thing as knowing that you're so important that your mommy and daddy are there for you. Well, what happens if a woman leaves the workforce and goes to the mommy track? What does it do to her? Well, a lot of mothers feel total relief because they can design their day and they're there with their child not feeling the longing to be because that's 
part of the biology and psychology of a woman who is a mommy, that longing to be with their child. So a lot of that is relieved. Some of it, though, gets worse because they try to be as perfectionistic and businesslike about running a home that they drive themselves crazy. Mm -hmm. So the book gives lots of tips and suggestions about how to make that transition a very positive one. So, oh, and the question that was in the uh, preface that yeah. you showed just before we started talking yeah. about fulfillment. <laughs> I love when I hear that because I hear some people say, oh, well, women just cannot feel totally fulfilled, you know, being at home. Well, nobody feels totally fulfilled being anywhere and doing anything. <laughs> we all get frustrated, <laughs> burnt out, tired, annoyed, and need a break from whatever it is. So that's, that's a fantasy notion. But I got one letter the other day from a woman just after the book came out, and she said, I was really wondering if I had made the right choice until my kid's nine-month-old kid, I think mm -hmm. it was nine months, sneezed up his banana in her face by accident yeah. and started giggling like crazy. She started laughing and she said, what's better than this? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure a sneezed up banana. <laughs> that is fulfillment. <laughs> I, was yeah. thinking, All right. I was thinking the same thing, Pat. Well, Dr. Laura, um, you're doing a wonderful a live tribute to moms in May. It's a simulcast in theaters only, but can you tell us a little bit about it and what we should expect? Yes, I'm doing the show live from Irvine, California at the Barclay Theater, and it's going to be in 450 movie theaters. And it's such a weird thought for me to be, imagine people out there eating popcorn while I'm talking. But it's going to be a multimedia event, and it's about praising all mommies. And it's going to be uh, videotapes of mothers in various situations, uh, slides, music, me answering questions, me talking about my life. There are going to be lots of costume changes. I'll be pregnant and giving birth. All within about 10 minutes. <laughs> hey, now, that's going to be a trick. I want a that's camera good. while that's happening, Dr. Well, anyhow, the book is In Praise of Stay-at-Home Moms. Hey, you need it. It's a great book. It's available on Amazon and where books are sold. And that date again on that special uh, performance? May 5th and 6th. May 5th and 6th. Uh, in they theater. should go on my website at drlaura.com and they can get tickets and find out a list. There's a list of all 450 stations and they can, uh, stations, I'm sorry, movie theaters, and they can discern which one's closest Fantastic. to their home. Well, you are terrific. We appreciate you. It's always good to have you with us. Thank you again. And thank you.